Critters for Sale is a visual novel with a surreal plot and characters, stories that transcend the boundaries of normality and reality. The project contains numerous violent death scenes like strangulation, beheading or burning. Often, the effect of viewing scenes is smoothed out by a unique visual series which is similar to the first 1-bit games in the history with pixel graphics. The graphics do not have any bright images, there are only two colors black and white. Critters for Sale does not have a single storyline. The novel is divided into five unrelated stories, the events of which unfold in different time frames and universes. Often, the main stories are North African and Middle Eastern folk tales, which were not invented for children and look like horror films. During the passage, the user will deal with such phenomena as dark magic, encounter cruel creatures from other worlds and even ancient bloodthirsty gods. The majority of the gameplay is devoted to dialogues and cast scenes. In the dialogues, gamers communicate with numerous characters and make key decisions that influence the further development of events and thus come to one of several endings. The key task of the gamer in each chapter is not to die although a series of fatal mistakes will kill the character even at the beginning of the journey. Much less attention is paid to the hidden object mini-game, with which the protagonists get the opportunity to interact with the environment. Critters for Sale is a fairly simple to perform, but at the same time a very entertaining text adventure that will send you into a surreal world and face the ominous events taking place in it. You will take on the role of an ordinary resident of an unremarkable town whose life is turned upside down at one moment. The thing is that you receive a strange letter from Michael Jackson himself, after reading which you will become a participant in inexplicable events. The game is a stylish visual novel that tells you about the existence of a dark world with black magic and a lot of secrets that will not be so easy to solve. You will be able to get acquainted with immortality, as well as go on an exciting journey through time. In total, the game is presented in five different parts, each of which is dedicated to one of the creatures. The actions of each stage will take you to a variety of world epics, where you will encounter interesting, but at the same time frightening events. Hell's Journey is ready to give you a great time in which you definitely won't be bored. Critters for Sale a collection of psychedelic stories, but the project of the author from distant Morocco, who creates under the pseudonym Sanashi, stands out even against the background of other retro adventures, with its specific one-bit graphics. Critters for Sale is a hybrid of a visual novel and a point-and-click quest, consisting of five separate short stories. The events of Snake, Goat, Monkey, Dragon and Spider unfold in different places and eras, but relate to the same themes of black magic, immortality and time travel. As you can see from the Steam page, the release of this entire set is scheduled for June 3rd, but a few days ago the release of the first, free series took place. You can get acquainted with Critters for Sale, Snake and evaluate its psychedelic visual performance both on Steam and on itch.io. In this episode, in the role of a certain Sergei Volkov, we, in 2033, find ourselves in a mysterious club where everything begins. Secret societies, aliens and alternative timelines are attached. I burned my palms touching her I smashed my forehead catching up with her an unfamiliar force. The Neptunians have fallen asleep. Kubrick, David Lynch and Death Grips. It's better to reply to messages at 3 a.m. I almost peed when I saw MC Ride and Death Grips. The author has a great sense of humor. Don't lie to Michael Jackson. Even if you are not Sergi. Cool visual and musical accompaniment. I hope to see the friendship of Sergi and Michael in the next games. Well, it's just fucking awesome. Met with the king of pop music Stefan Burnett. The best and most important relevant reference to my favorite band Dead Grips. In this game I will talk to the real king of pop music Michael Jackson. I definitely recommend it. Powerful point and click retro horror. Interactive presentation of the plot, thoughtful endings, perfectly inscribed cameos of different celebrities, surrealism in its purest form, and all this in the most occult setting. Fans of the genre will love it. Phantasmagoria, surrealism and eccentricity. This is about how this work can be described. I am sure that the creator was on really heavy drugs when creating this crazy novel using Trip as an endless source of inspiration and random images. There is hardly any meaningful veiled background here, but probably there is no need for it. The gameplay is stuffy, because in one ending there are from one to six more endings, because of which you have to go through everything and force your brain to memorize scraps of information by which you could navigate among this madness. Very cool, but very little. Incredible experience. It reminds me of Borges' psychedelic and transcendental flair. Very cool. An unusual experience, 
wonderful sound and design. The best and most important relevant reference to my favorite band Dead Grips. I have seen the footage. I remain in the dark. A surreal collection of five stories connected to each other in the form of a visual novel. A good soundtrack, an art design that catches the eye even when watching trailers and screenshots, and of course the general psychedelic of what is happening. As well the game is short and takes about 4 hours to complete for all endings, unless you are a fan of something abstract and it's not worth buying. I played this game on January 1st for the new year, being a little drunk, knocking down my sadness and longing. Have I made the right choice for this event? It is quite possible, since this world attracts with its absurdity, confusion. After all, this novel is surreal, which means everything is fine. So, in short, this novel tells about various places times and people sometimes not only people telling about a strange world where the devil knows what is happening yes there is a plot but it is incomprehensible especially when drunk do you understand now a talking goat then a living michael jackson incomprehensible carpets and so on but let's move away from the events taking place i think it's worth getting acquainted with the laws of this universe on your own what i want to highlight in this novel is the unique style it clearly catches the eye when you first view the screenshots and the trailer this style conveys the mystery and peculiarity of what is happening well combined with magnificent musical compositions especially the unknown force the only thing is if you are in a dark room then your monitor can suddenly illuminate the whole room with light, keep in mind. So epileptic still should not try. The novel is definitely recommended for mandatory familiarization, but at the same time it is worth being prepared for psychedelics and the absurdity of what is happening. It was an unforgettable experience in exploring new worlds and getting to know its unusual inhabitants, as well as the events and incidents taking place. A great example of an author's game. A lot of different references, non-standard visual and narrative approach. The plot is generally a separate topic. It's like watching some kind of art house, and then looking at collecting pieces of meaning into a single picture. And everyone's picture will be different. In general, it's cool, funky and unusual. I'm waiting for the next portion of chaos chic visual style. This is strange. It's time to write a little more detail. I personally did not see the whole plot, the same name is flashing here and there do not count. First of all, this game can be interesting in images, characters and graphics style. As I wrote in the very first review, it's all very strange. For some reason, because of this, the novel Generation P comes to mind, but I did not notice any personal references to it. They are just similar in spirit, as if the heir of the Soviet intelligentsia had picked mushrooms and started going through everything he knows about foreign culture philosophy and mythology. This in itself is not bad, but it is better when all this is connected into a single whole and has some meaning, then the work becomes something more than just a collection of individual stories. And secondly, the generation close to the horse merges into some kind of wild, incoherent nonsense. Purely because of the images and references, I am ready to like, but no more. Disco I experienced a spiritual transformation after reading this novel. This game is perfect on its own. The first 15 minutes of Critters for Sale prove that video games can be whatever the hell you want them to be. You can watch the Death Grips concert in one bit. It is necessary to evaluate visual solutions, but this can be done by watching the trailer above. Otherwise, it's not a game. The stories are meaningless, the consequences of the choice are not at all obvious. You can die by choosing. At first glance, a completely harmless answer, and therefore you are simply afraid to choose something, just not to overplay it. There are a lot of NPCs, but 95% will not play any role in the plots. Everything is very simple to ever and click here, so this is the most popular novelty. As a phenomena, I liked it, but not as a game. What do we know? It is about different stories and their events, covering both individual and related ones. Anyway, all this happens in the same world and sometimes at different time intervals. I gave a cool Martian spicy food, made friends with him, saved the earth from invasion and took 60k with me. Cool game, finally a tie -up. There's cool music, cool style, cool that's it. Death Grips origin story I want games to be shorter and cheaper, fewer people make them, and I'm not kidding. Bottom row at the top, I talked about this in my review of the demo version, and I'll repeat it here, this game is like taking drugs. Good drugs and if you play this game on drugs, it will be like, uh, extra drugs? Don't take drugs unless you already have them, in which case don't let them go to waste. Let's move on to the review. Introduction. So, 
I immediately inform you that I was given the opportunity to become one of the first beta testers of the full version of the game thanks Sanashi. I'll try to give as balanced an overview here as possible, but just know that I was biased anyway even before the beta, as I liked the demo and weird games are my favorites. Advantages it starts immediately. No nonsense with the setup. Very stable. Even the beta version was already pretty reliable. Pressing Alt Tab does not cause problems. Steam overlay is working fine. Steam achievements are integrated seamlessly. Incredibly unique game. Full stop. Provides a good balance between creepy and intriguing. The plot can be described as a surreal reincarnation of the cosmic horror acid trip. The one-bit graphics are very well executed. You really notice this in such simple things as the reflection of light on the club floor in Chapter 1. Impressive original art style. A modern look at the old-school adventure format of the 80s 90s. Space horror in one-bit graphics is a fantastically frightening combination when it wants to be. The music is amazing. Great soundtrack. The sound effects have been carefully selected, adds a lot of surreal atmosphere and adds depth to what would otherwise be a simple interface. The way the fast forward feature distorts the music and sound effects for each individual scene must have been difficult but it paid off by adding to the theme of the game. The overall sound design causes a strong sense of friction look. Lol. The gameplay and the plot have a cinematic touch. The dialogue of the story and the narration are also unique. The themes and formulations seem otherworldly which only enhances the overall feeling of immersion in an adventure taking place in time, space and other lives. The game is full of surprises. You'll understand what I mean. The game also does a good job of making you wonder if you're playing a character in the game or if you're the main character. So so although I would still classify this as a point and click adventure game genre, the overall interactivity may be sparse. The puzzles are mostly simple. However, this is offset by an exciting psychedelic gaming experience in general. Many casino games can be tedious. The puzzles at the end of the chapter required going back to previous chapters to find important information. Scams. The main problem that I think people will face in connection with this name is the nature of the gameplay, namely the repetitive elements and the lack of save slots. This game is divided into chapters and many of them have multiple endings. Since the essence of the game is to progress to the next chapter, most of your time is spent trying to unlock all the different endings. Since there are no save slots in the game, this entails repeating from the beginning of each chapter. Now there is both a function to navigate through the dialogue box and the aforementioned fast forward button. In some cases, you can also just ignore certain elements and NPCs to get to where you need to go. But even for me, it was a tedious process at times. This design choice is related to both the theme and the plot of the game and is an integral part of the overall gameplay. Adding a save function would be welcome, but could disrupt the style of the game itself. For me, in general, this problem would fall into the category of meh but I know that for some it will eventually disconnect them from the game, so I put it here. This game features one of my sworn enemies in PNC gaming, namely, Scary Music Puzzle Dan Dan of DAM NNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNN
and the number of endings that have been unlocked for each episode is tracked on the loading screen. The episodes span from the distant past to the future and realms without time, as well as spanning locations across the globe and without space. All of the episodes are connected as part of a larger narrative. The game dabbles with classic science fiction and fantasy themes but skirts engaging with the concepts on a deeper level. I personally found myself frequently bored. Although sometimes psychedelic like watching an acid trip and violent, the text-based structure and black and white color palette make the experience seem less intense than it may have otherwise. Gameplay and mechanics The user interface is usually arranged with character information for example, name, age, location, temperature to the left, the episode critter Kenji to the right, an upper central area that has the visual space the player will interact with and expositional and choice text below. The majority of the episodes consist of making text-based choices for example, take the key or not with very minimal puzzles and many games. Although supposedly the episodes can be played in any order, there are a couple puzzles that require information from episodes other than the one the player is currently in, and unfortunately when the player is in the middle of an episode, their DOES and seem to be a way to save or exit to the loading screen. There is a fast forward button that can be used to speed up repeat playthroughs for the endings, but I wish that there was an outright skip option. Art style and graphics The game has a black and white color palette and a pixel style of art that evokes static on a screen. Of note is that the art is dynamic, which means screenshots don't do the visuals justice. It opens with an epilepsy warning for good reason. Although this art style does seem to make the violence and gore feel sanitized. Sound and music critters for sale has no voice acting, which I as and surprising in such a heavily text-based game. The game frequently makes use of minimalistic but situationally appropriate sound effects for example, wind in a desert, typing sound while text appearing on screen, but when it does bring in music, it spans the spectrum in variety from metal to jazz to organ. Achievements There are 18 possible achievements all connected to unlocking each of the different endings, 6 for snake, 4 for goat, 1 for monkey, 6 for spider, and 1 for dragon. Verdict at $9.99 at the time of review and 18 possible endings achievements. There is certainly enough content for the price as long as the player is aware Critters for Sale stays on the superficial level with its exploration of the weird. If you like choose your own adventure books as a kid and want to recreate that experience with modern technology rather than page flipping, this game may hit the spot for you. However, if you are looking for a more engaging or intellectually stimulating gameplay experience, the game is probably best purchased at a discount. This game is jarring minimalist, and offensive. Most people will hate it. The only way you might enjoy a game like this is if you're a very particular type of person. The type of person who has reached that point in their gaming career where games just aren't interesting anymore, and they don't do anything unexpected or unique. They don't tug at those neurons in the back of your head quite like they used to. This is the game for that person. Are you the person? Statistically. Probably not, but only you can decide if you are. I estimate that close to 98% of players will find the experience of playing critters for sale jarring, overstimulating, and unintuitive. However, for someone like me, who's played hundreds of games over nearly 20 years of their life, this is the game for me. It's new, unique, detailed in all the right ways, and does something nearly no game has done in the past 5 years. It's left me surprised, jarred. Even, there are moments where I felt hints of legitimate terror while playing a point-and-click adventure. It's not the kind of thing that can easily be put into words. You really just have to play it for yourself. That's all I have to say. You can get killed by Michael Jackson. Giving this a thumbs up feels wrong. I felt more frustration than fun or interest playing the game and didn't even finish the last chapter due to how obtuse and slow the puzzles are. The story is a weird mishmash of bits and pieces not even coherent in terms of imagery, adding layers upon layers of occultism, horror, anim, pop culture, philosophy, and outright weirdness. Giving it a thumbs down also feels wrong. Critters for Sale is very unique, with memorable style. Clearly lots of love and daydreaming went into polishing the smallest details. It's also nice to play a game entangled in Western culture, but not stemming from it directly, an odd mixture of Asian, Arabic, African, and American roots intertwined and not in a do, how oriental way. It has a distinctly feverish tone unlike anything else. It's worth your time for that alone. But damn, 
is it an unfun slog to play? You know how we love all those adventure games that have multiple endings but force the player to click through all the steps again when they want to get to the fork in the story? No, because we don't. Everyone hates retracing their steps six times to watch a different ending. So why the hell do you force us to do it? Yes, there is a speed up button, but it doesn't speed the game up nearly enough. So instead of getting immersed, spooked, and carried away by the feverish setting, you groan and you once again watch the character wake up in Snake. Then there are the puzzles. They are, bluntly put, bad. Many require walking back and forth, watching time and again the animations that were very impressive the first time, but become a frustrating slog that you can't fully skip. And hey, you wanna play 15 puzzle in an adventure game? Because this is the kind of game that has a 15 puzzle in it. No, it did not come out in mid-90s. When in doubt, I opt for the thumbs up because I know that game development is hard. But it's not a full endorsement. Play this game if style over substance is something you can deal with. And if you don't get frustrated by slow animations. If you overcome those downsides, you'll be in for a treat. P.S. You know the read another book mem? I hereby present to you. Watch another TV series. Twin Peaks was great. Now leave the zip colored floor be. It's honestly become a sign of bad taste. Less bad in this specific case because the game is filled with very odd references. It starts with the time traveling Michael Jackson who is your friend. But in general, it's not quirky. It's mainstream. I hereby forbid all future Twin Peaks references in surreal games. People often ask which game will be gaming Citizen Kane. Well this is gaming's Pink Flamingos. Dreadfully original absurd, and terminally online. The game is super author well done universe class. In any case better than the arcane. Critters at a good price? Satisfactory. Summon the devil with Michael Jackson and MC Ride. Eat curry with the Prince of Mars. Get strangled in your sleep by a vaporwave mem. Listen to bondage gimps make obscure slash biz slash jokes. Groove like only dragons can groove. Critters for sale is like my goth ex-girlfriend. Gorgeous, extremely stylish, well read. Excellent taste in music, morbid as in a great way to spend a Friday night. Also like my goth ex-girlfriend, Critters for Sale is a bit too short for my tastes. A total tease that left me wanting more, cost me too much money for what I got out of her and had basically zero replay value once I figured out all her secrets. I recommend getting both on sale. Death Grips I love this game so much and am speaking with my own free will. This is the future of gaming. Cool innovative, loveful indie titles, not triple-A garbage, a surreal and unique experience broaching the subjects of death and reincarnation, with gloomy influences of religion and magic. You slip into the role of the five critters, snake, goat, monkey, spider and dragon which are all connected regarding the storyline. The gameplay itself is a mixture of point and click and light puzzle solving. In order to unlock all possible endings on a character, there is one of the critters requiring you to use information you gather in another character's story. Monochrome and hazy art really fits the mood and despite its simplicity, incorporates fluid animations that add to the tension rather than seeming static. The soundtrack is good too. It was a bit creepy at times but that's just because I am easily affected by such things. I found this game rather intriguing and enjoyable and was delighted to see that the story is planned to extend into further creations of the developer. Well done. Typical day in New York. Typical day in New York. I stay noited. Critters for sale. But at what cost? Day one no Zaza. This game has everything a man like me would want. Great soundtrack, trippy uncanny valley visuals, MC Wright is somehow there. It doesn't get better than that, it's perfect. If you blended that feeling when you wake up in bed though you don't recall falling asleep in it, phosphine, and maybe a few drops of acid, you get the surreal piece of art. The game is a point and click visual novel hybrid consisting of five short episodes each with a varying amount of endings that all feel fulfilling. The choice and puzzle elements create a great balance of just reading and looking, and actually being engaged if waking up to a text from Michael Jackson at 4am isn't engaging enough. The story isn't one that can be described to someone who hasn't experienced it, but in a good way. Sanashi puts it best in the store pages about this game but it is really something you have to dive into too, revealing the cryptic world filled with evil, aliens, and Mr. Death Grips which I cannot wait to see more of in future games. The dialogue is extremely entertaining no matter if it's humorous or unsettling, and the way the main character is written gives the feeling that it is you, even if the choices are sometimes black and white. The style the visual mind of this man is phenomenal. And along with the audio, 
feeling and atmosphere really make this stand out more as something that should held at an art museum rather than steam. The one-bit graphics and image synthesis really create a feeling of a joyful unease that keep me glued to the screen as if it was visual crack. The downsides. Though a fast forward button is present, it is only useful when speeding animations. I would have liked it to auto continue the text, but it wasn't something that bothered me too much when playing, it might just be annoying to others. A lack of quick saving, or section skips did get a little bit annoying during the episodes with six endings. Spider being the main offender though I feel it would change the way the game was intended to be experienced. It would have been nice to have after you complete one ending or something. In spite of the casino games can get tedious if you get a different ending instead of the one that requires the money. They are a set of six human benchmark type challenges but they get very tedious. The Mega Chat fixed them on day three. Extra points for a dev who listens and responds. Only downside is that I played it all I guess. The verdict. I stumbled across this game on its release day and was captivated by the trailer I felt as it was something I have wanted for so long and bought it immediately and I do not regret it. The entire time playing this game I was filled with extreme excitement, curiosity, and a little bit of fear there are some really weird psychedelic visuals and I love it I mean I have never bothered writing reviews for anything so that should say something. If you felt any sort of intrigue or enjoyment from the trailer, the demo or this review, get it now you will not regret it. Have to say that I don't regret the experience of Critters for Sale, but it's difficult to recommend. It doesn't demand too much of your time and none of the handful of puzzles are particularly difficult to get through. Most of your time will be spent nabbing different endings whose roots are readily apparent although the spider storyline is a bit of work because of the repetition. In short, this is a straight up visual novel with some PNC adventure game elements thrown in for variety, but nothing fancier than your typical hog puzzles, albeit one with a terribly fascinating aesthetic. The narrative, on the other hand, which is thus the main reason you want to play Critters is surreal and at times purposely incomprehensible or obtuse, if you will, and definitely not appealing to the masses. You need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and not being told a thing. You can get every single ending of the game and still not draw any reliable conclusions on what you just finished reading. There are clear themes present, but no clear statement, if that makes sense. The overall story is actually quite easy to follow but its simplicity masks the underlying explorations of music and religion that don't seem to come to any sort of resolution. Throw on a really neat one-bit filter applied to photographs and videos it's pretty trippy looking and if nothing else, it's intriguing. For what it's worth, it's very cool, but a little too obscured for its own good. That said, I still enjoyed the kind of WTF that the game gave me from end to end, but at the same time, it's a bit of a slog to get through, even with its short run time. Right from the outset, each of the five chapters or short stories have the number of possible endings shown to you, so you're expected to go through them multiple times as well you should, if you want to glean any of the narrative to be found here. The problem here is that it's not designed for repeated play in the sense that you'll have to go through the same scenes multiple times, even if you want to be aligned right to the divergence point to get to another route and you have a very useless fast forward button that does little more than speed up the soundtrack. There's no save point so you can't easily jump back to a desired point to explore another route, but admittedly this isn't too bad since endings are often abrupt and feel oddly out of place at times, but otherwise usually easy to get to. This is a game I pushed through rather than had fun with. The deliberate confusion and obfuscation of the point, as it were, makes it less a journey of discovery and more just realizing that everything is completely out of your control and you're just along for the ride which is arguably the point, but not a very satisfying one. Even if you take a deeper dive into Critter's themes, there's no point where you will feel floored or amazed or, well, anything, really. When I reached the end of it, I simply thought, okay, and that was that. It's neat, and the one-bit filter certainly boosts its appeal but that falls off to the wayside when you realize it's applied to photos and videos rather than a result of meticulous artistry. Still, the juxtaposition of music, celebrity, religion, and magic is an interesting concept and definitely explored, albeit perhaps not as thoroughly as I would have liked. It's not bad, but it's not going to be everyone's cuppa. If you like more experimental stuff, at least in terms of narrative and presentation, this might be up your alley. I didn't dislike Critters despite what I wrote above. I just find it hard to tell people they ought to play it. Still, the promise of more to come is a train that I haven't decided to hop off of just yet, 
so take that as you will. This must be one of the most bizarre experiences I could have ever had with a video game. Critters for Sale overall feels like skipping over through 5 random chapters of a 600 page book. You don't know what you're reading, you don't get to understand what is happening or who are these characters and you may only recognize one or two. This feeling of being lost is what adds up to the whole mystery of its complicated lore, and I can't get even close to describing the story of this magnificent game. Now, my only complaint about this format of storytelling is that the game plays a lot with your expectations, placing a lot of cards on the table but only letting you see one. The developer has confirmed that this game is just an introduction to a larger universe and that there are more games to come. So if you finished this game and ended up with more questions than answers, it's alright, we'll just have to wait. Gameplay wise, it's good enough. For the most part you have easy puzzles, until you get to Spider and Dragon, which are harder and longer episodes. These two can be a little bit frustrating to play, especially since Dragon requires you to replay previous episodes and solve more puzzles inside them, but overall it's a great experience. I love the cultural references, the art the characters and their creepy designs, and I'm still thinking about some theories I have about the fragmented and complicated story of Critters for Sale. It might not be a game for everyone to play, but I definitely recommend it if you're at least a little bit interested after seeing the screenshots or trailers. For now, I will be waiting to begin my fascinating adventures with my time-traveling partner Michael Jackson. Tootle Pip Death Grips Fan Fiction Take The F King Electronic Cannabis. All sweet man-made horrors beyond my comprehension. Shoot out to death grips. Great game stay noited. Visually stunning and the soundtrack is killer. The story is the most controversial aspect, divided about 40-60 between wacky internet references and an underlying story of dark magic and esotericism with little crossover. Critters for Sale still plays like a proof of concept, an episode zero, of Sanashi's story, with each episode having distinct gameplay rhythms tonal peaks and valleys, and story beats. Most of all the biggest strength in the story is a rare case where the whole mem of disjointed stories and then they come together in the outro cutscene actually plays really well here. The meta-narrative of the game jumps all over the place and justifies a fragmented structure in the plot. It would have been nice to have a bit more of a through line at the end just to give a bit more of an eh moment, simply because what Sanashi makes next is whatever he makes next and isn't this game. Like. Metal Gear Solid 2 only worked because there was a before and after to elevate a game that was made to elevate other games. Granted, the next one could be Kino and here I would be, doing the equivalent of putting my own fist in my mouth to see if it fits, but time will tell. Overall the visual and audio spectacle of this game is something else, and I would heavily recommend trying it or playing the demo, if you're weary seeing Stefan Burnett in the trailer buy it on sale. I want to play this game again while on acid sometime. For fans of DMT plus Vaporwave plus Satanism, at least now I know who MC Ride really is. Some kind of a fever dream, surreal and abstract visual novel about black magic, death and time travel. I need a cigarette after this one. My son got crucified. A strange enigmatic journey through the five different stages of agony featuring MC Ride. Interactive work of art? Yes? Yes? Immense corruption on the lands of mankind. Can you understand and recommend a game based solely on the virtues of its position as an aesthetic endeavor rather than merely a ludic one? If you can, then this would indeed be an immediate recommended based on the presentation alone. Every detail is clever and well thought through. The way facial animations twist and contort, the simple black and white color scheme and 8-bit presentation giving even a photo of a goat staring into the camera lends a genuinely eerie feel. These things are what make Critters for Sale, to put it bluntly, the. But that's not all Critters for Sale is. It is more than its pretty face. Built on a powerful soundtrack such as by very simple presentation and a cleverly interwoven thread of stories that make more sense holistically rather than apart, Critters for Sale is a daring experiment in video game design, which understands that it is not about the quality of the graphics or the volume of the gore that makes good horror. Instead, it dwells on the unseen, the unsettling and the plain strange, building an uncomfortable atmosphere that is always encouraging tension between the act of playing and the act of experiencing a story. Do we really want to agree to talk to a strange, plastic-faced celebrity in the middle of a dark and liminal club? No, probably not, but as with all the best horror games, 
it is curiosity and a habitually human desire to stick our own necks into the noose just to know what the deal is. So, to whom would I recommend this? Well, any horror fan, for a start. It's simply too slick and too neat not to recommend. It understands itself inside and out, building a cohesive and frighteningly good atmosphere through that great music as well as an understanding of its own mythos that never dwells or overexplains itself to the point of tedium as many poor works of horror do. You are always left with a sense of mystery and uncertainty, the best kind of horror. Adventure gamers might get a kick of this too, but the puzzling isn't super tough, it's more about the experience required to get through these five short stories and unearth the different endings, or even leave them buried. A bloody good, tight and focused horror experience, highly recommended. Pick it up whenever you can. This game feels like if you got taste in the middle of an LSD dream and somehow stayed asleep. Features Critters Creatures M I C H A E L a very nice rug as somebody who thoroughly enjoyed the entire aesthetic of the game down to the visuals character presentation and especially the soundtrack I can really recommend this game simply on the merit that there's not really a lot to do and even with its unique presentation it isn't particularly memorable there are five acts and multiple endings for most of the acts two of the acts only have one ending so this naturally incentivizes players to go back explore more and get different endings. I think that works quite well, and most of the endings are simple enough to figure out. Being a point-and-click game, your only real challenges are clicking on things you might notice to interact with in puzzles. These puzzles are all pretty standard fare and just mildly annoying at worst, and the devs actually had a ton of forethought in being able to circumvent tedious ones for the act that necessitates them for multiple endings. However, the endgame puzzle, which I won't spoil what the last solution is, doesn't work well. If you look at the achievement completion rates for the game, the achievement for completing the last act has a higher completion rate than the achievements that should be necessary to get the last. People are just looking up the solution because it's a silly puzzle. Not only that, but the fact that it's one you'd need to quit the level and do the puzzles on the level 4 all over again if you don't have the solution makes just looking up the answer totally acceptable, in my opinion. Outside of these puzzles, the primary enjoyment of the game is the aesthetics and immersing yourself in the world of the game through its environments and characters. Although there isn't really much to be said about NPCs in this game because they only have about one or two lines of dialogue if they don't have info pertaining to the ending of the act. This is why I say the game isn't very memorable, because if there's only one ending for Act 3 and 5, you are not going to be replaying them. The character used in the Steam library banner of the game only has two lines of dialogue and isn't really relevant to the story. The character in the Steam library card appears in Act 3 and has plot significance, but only appears in that act, and the same act does not have multiple endings. There is no personal investment in the narrative or characters. At the end of the day and in reality the TL. Dr. Critters for Sale is a cool little experience with very little depth, which is perfectly fine. For $10, I'd say it's a fair price for a unique, obvious passion project, even if it you can you get every ending in about 2-3 hours depending on if you go straight to a guide. Here's why I'm not recommending the game. The fact that there isn't anything particularly engaging or memorable about playing the game. You could just as easily watch a video online of every single ending in less than 2 hours and effectively get the full effect. Being the one clicking on things doesn't really matter much in that regard. As much as I would like the devs to be successful and make future projects, from a business standpoint, there needs to be an engaging reason to play the game oneself that can't be achieved simply by watching a video. The gems sometimes you just happen to find games with an appeal so interesting that makes you wonder why no one's made them before. Critters for Sale is just that. An extremely atmospheric and well thought point and click adventure, instantly recognizable thanks to various elements added by the developer which makes the game stand out in its own way. As simple as it gets the UI and the overall art direction is what caught my attention in the first place. The one bit yet photorealistic setting combined with the clean and dark design of the interface makes for an uncanny voyage through the various critters. With photorealistic I mean that many of the video sequences you'll find in this game are real life scenes seen through this one bit filter. There's obviously a mix of that in handcrafted scenery which blend together really well. I'm sure the use of pre-rendered videos made for a budget-friendly recreation of what the developer had in mind, 
and I'm totally fine with it. In fact, that's what gives Critters for Sale such an interesting appeal and uniqueness. Timeline based the structure is actually simple. You have five stories, each with different endings based on how you act. The outcomes of the stories are basically two, either you live or die. And that's about it. It's how these various stories are tied together which make for an interesting journey. How narrative elements are scattered throughout different timelines and how they're connected keep you invested into moving forward. Puzzle There are some puzzles scattered across the game. The majority of them are pretty easy and straightforward. I've got stuck a couple of times searching for the different endings, but it's really manageable. The hardest part would be playing the games in the doomsday machines in the casino. You basically have to play some memory games to earn some cash which will be used for an ending, and the games are pretty simple in concept but pretty hard to master. They're pretty much memory games. Thankfully the developer has been kind enough to include the option to give yourself money in order to get to the said ending. Moving forward this seems to be the first of a series of games based on the Critters for Sale universe. The whole idea seems to be related to reincarnation and, of course, different timelines for different stories. Other than that, I can't say much else. I highly suggest playing this game and discover everything on your own. Can't wait to see more. The 90s of the last century paranoids rule the world. These are mentally ill fans of a dark occult sect, whose leader is an abstract being with a bull's head and big horns. At one moment they received unlimited power, money, immortality and world power. Now their adherents are in every country. They own from real estate to casinos and gambling. Their pawns are in power and their adherents. In gratitude for the great power of a gift from their masters, will strangle and lead astray any person who gets in their way, or sometimes just get caught by them arm in arm. They do not seek to disguise themselves, but they all have related features and they are very easy to figure out realizing that now they are in charge and nothing threatens them, because people do not even guess about their dark essence, because they are busy with endless self-elving, and are distracted by their problems, skillfully created by paranoids to weaken and control humanity. The actions of the game take place at once in several time intervals. We have five heroes, at first glance there is nothing to connect them with each other but this is not the case, and it will become clear very soon. All of them, against their will, will be involved in not the healthiest events and will meet a big and dark force and someone will die but about everything in order. The hero of the first novel will be woken up by a text message from a friend, asking him to come to a nightclub around the corner where an attempt on Michael Jackson will take place by one of the main adherents of the cult. According to the plot, Michael Jackson is something like an angel who can bless people, appear in different forms, and protect people. The hero of the second novel will search with his best friend for the source of eternal life and untold riches in the Sahara in ancient times before the birth of Christ. On the basis of greed, he will be killed by his best friend after all. The gates leading to eternal life and wealth will not open without meanness and betrayal of an innocent person. In gratitude, the traitor will become one of the right hands of the leader of the dark force. It will be possible to travel in time and space and live forever. He will be known to the whole world as an ordinary musician from the USA. But in reality he is one of the main followers of a cult that will shit and confuse humanity for thousands of years, leading certain people to bad and mean decisions, and temporarily rewarding them for betrayal and unscrupulousness, or punishing them if they want to turn away from evil. The hero of the third novel is a tourist who happened to be in Morocco with his younger brother. The action takes place at stake in the capital, where the main holiday of the local residents is about to take place, but the hero does not know what its essence is. And while with his younger brother he will determine what the essence of the tradition is by asking locals and tourists who speak riddles and abstract terms, or simply not understanding what they want from them his brother will be gone all this will happen in front of the crowd. The hero of the fourth novel gambling lover in his favorite casino, whose owner suddenly changed due to the crisis learns that the new Russian owners, occultists, and casinos are something like a radio point to attract and pit Martians and aliens from other planets to attract and direct them to the destruction of humanity, getting a solid profit and gain for this. The hero can both find nothing and stop the invasion if he agrees with the strange visitor who turns out to be the son of the king of the Martians, who will make sure that not all people are mean and worthy of destruction. The hero of the final novel sold a soul to live forever, but that's bad luck. First in an ancient Japanese temple he has to go through a special ceremony. After collecting all the magic stones and unraveling the maddening puzzles he is reborn, but with a nuance he becomes an eternal slave of paranoids, 
their hand and the prisoner who must carry out all their orders. Moreover, he himself will not even remember his past life, thinking that everything that happened is just a dream. At this point, the game will end, and I will sit and count the days until the sequel is released. There is such a thing as a work of art. Usually this term is understood as the daub of armless artists, or antique garbage with which ancient kings scratched their asses I understand such games that took me by the living and made me feel, awaken in me a pile of emotions, and not the most joyful and inspiring, but carried me away here is an advertising PR video of this, without exaggeration, great game. I would shake Sonoshi's hand, because what he did will go down in history. I am infinitely grateful to you, and I think that you have a great talent don't bury it, man. The game was made by just one person on Unity. But at the same time it captivates and delivers more feelings than millions of big budget slag, into which billions are simply stuffed. This is the main indicator that we have an artist and a creator with a capital letter, and not a small greedy corrupt effective manager who thinks about his paranoid capitals. Be sure to get acquainted with this game. I assure you she will not leave anyone indifferent. You will either love or hate this game. The third is not given. After all, this treasure is not for everyone it is for those who want to play learn new things, and get emotions, and not decompose and fall into an emotional pit into which new soulless projects and events in the world pull us with great force. As an any masterpiece, the creatures are full of nuances and small details that will eventually result in a giant canvas where everything is connected and intertwined with each other. For example minor characters with whom we contact the campaign of the game someone will not understand why they are needed. They don't reveal the world, actions, and especially don't move the plot forward, what's the point of them? Whatever it is, I will say this, each character is needed here for some reason and sheds light on certain things, making the story much bigger than it seems at first glance. Ordinary people we meet, absolutely do not understand what is happening, and do not suspect anything wrong, going straight into the clutches of occultists like naive cattle, or rotating next to them because it is fashionable, and the crowd cannot be mistaken. I think this is how the author ridicules public opinion often what happens on PR and big money invested in distraction or substitution of concepts. The girl that is depicted on the cover of the game is the main mascot and the symbol of the game. According to the plot, this is a 19-year LD American who came from the States for the main holiday, not really understanding its essence, and not afraid that she will become one of the next victims not the most reasonable and humane locals living according to medieval customs, and not particularly happy visitors. This is a revelation I passed in two sessions, and since then I have never forgotten about the game. It took me a little more time than I would like to digest and understand this game. And he will agree to create this video, at least not for 8 years as a category on CSGO and thank you for that. This game is compared to Lynch's paintings but Grandfather is clearly still far from the flight of thought and morality that is in this masterpiece. Lynch is about everyday life and not epic making things, but creatures for sale, about a very similar reality in which many will see similar features and a lot in common with ours. Let's talk about the main driving force of the game, the Pernoids. They have so absorbed the world that they arrange outright genocide, pit people against each other, not forgetting to carry out sacrifices making a show out of them, absolutely openly not being shy that someone will fight them back. This force has taken root in all countries and continents on the planet Earth. They have only one goal to live forever, drive people crazy, and feed on their suffering. Anyone can become their servant live forever and have nothing to need. But he is also not insured at any moment to become their dinner and another victim, whose soul was stolen and led into another ritual, for the sake of prolonging his power. No one knows who these creatures are and where they come from. It is known that they also have weaknesses, and the person has freedom of choice you can succumb to them, or find the key and defeat the ancient evil, at least not become its victim no one restricts you the game is permeated with the spirit of freedom. There are 19 endings in the game and the outcome of your hero's life depends only on your ingenuity and attentiveness. The game is divided into 5 chapters each is dedicated to some kind of animal. We play for the most ordinary people who are faced with a dark and inexplicable force. Will they be able to survive and not become its dinner? Find the cause and fix the situation? We will learn about all this in this game. Interested? It's not about our reality, although I'm not sure. It's about the new art house game Critters for sale from the brilliant developer of the loner Sonoshi, who gave birth to one of the darkest psychedelic and maddening games of the 21st century. After this game, 
light will be shed on many events taking place in reality, and you will begin to better understand certain illogical actions that make up our real world today. Let's go into more detail. The game is divided into five chapters, which can be played in any order, and start immediately from any one. They have only an indirect connection with each other, and from the first time you are still unlikely to understand what kind of madness is going on here. The characters are connected very indirectly almost all of them live in the USA in the 90s of the last century, do not differ in intelligence, and understanding in which world they live, and what changes have occurred in it recently. All these heroes fall into the clutches of those dark forces with which they associate with or against their will. In total, each chapter has four endings most of which are bad, and interestingly, even if you die, the game will still continue. This is the first time I see this in modern games. The author of the game is not going to read us morals or warn us, saying AAA that's bad, don't do that taking away our freedom of choice. No, we are free to do what we want. They won't tell us what is good and what is bad leaving it to us. Have you ever wanted to sell your brother for a sacrifice ritual start a war with aliens kill Michael Jackson find the source of eternal life by killing your best friend or go through the right of eternal life to be reborn at the cost of the lies of others go ahead. But we must remember that every such action will have terrible and grave consequences and will trigger a chain of insidious events that will affect both you and other innocent people. The author does not forbid you to get involved with the dark force and to substitute others. On the contrary, it seems to me that most players will do so. That's what I like. The game doesn't judge you for your actions you can replay any chapter as you want, and with each ending you will discover new details and pieces of information. One passage for a complete concept of the essence will obviously not be enough. At least you need to go through the game 2 dash 3 times, and even then there may be questions because everything that happens is veiled metaphors, hints, abstract psychedelic visuals, and riddles that can be interpreted in different ways. Some of the local dialogues can drive you into a stupor, confuse you, and naturally drive you crazy. The author wanted to show that local paranoids are naturally crazy sick people who seek to make their weak out likenesses out of normal people. But the essence and the main thing is still clear and understandable. The author tells us about the consequences of the seizure of the world by dark occult cults, about what harm they can do to non-initiates, and what sacrifices the cult adherents make to become subjects of the dark forces. A few players will try to understand this story in more detail and understand what kind of creatures they are, and who and why they are behind them, and why it is simple and naive heroes who meet them, obviously not ready for what they will survive. The whole plot is served in snatch as we walk through the levels we communicate and interact with people and humanoid creatures occasionally choosing different answers and dialogues solving simple riddles and logical chains. The game is absolutely not complicated, despite its appearance. The first games of the 80s, anyone will pass it. Unlike the sophisticated and arch-complex games of the 80s, you can get stuck and blunt here only at the end. Fortunately there is already a guide for passing in the Steam, for which many thanks. The game has been translated into the most common languages and the translation conveys very well even the smallest symbols and references from the original. Bravo! In general, let's learn more about the visual this is the first thing that caught my eye. There are practically no games with such graphics today they all remain far away in the 80s and early 90s. The visual style is very unusual and consists of two colors black and white, but I assure you this is enough to convey all the emotions and colors of this story. The graphics are pixelated but it goes to face. If there were a lot of colors and a lot of detail, the game would not be so creaky and frightening. There would not be that authentic era of the late 80s. After all, in addition to the scene in the USA in the early 90s, we hear the music of those times. Webpunk and Cypunk are playing everywhere here and the most interesting thing is that it calms and relaxes. In general, the local soundtrack throws any hotline Miami and other posers with an application for an unusual soundtrack. I have not met the local soundtrack in more than one game. This is a rattling mix of post-punk rock dream crust, industrial, and from a dozen related genres. This is a real mix of untrained music that perfectly recreates the tempo and mood of that era, and plunges into a trance akin to hypnosis or a very strong trance state. There is a lot of music here and the soundtrack will be remembered for any reason and you will want to listen to it at least a couple more times. Passing modern games there is no good and unusual music in them and the creatures for sale consist of perfectly matched music a little more than completely. Remove it the game will lose a lot 
Although nothing will change in any other pathetic cacophony against the background without any emotions or requests to create a different mood is now the norm of the industry, no matter how sad. A few words about the duration of the game the first time I went through it in three hours, although it's not enough, but I open only five endings, while eleven more remained unknown to me. Playing for the first time, and not knowing what will happen next I save the lies of four characters out of five, which you will agree deserves respect. This game shocked me both literally and figuratively I was in shock and, to be honest, I am still in it. Although this game was completed exactly a year ago on August 14, 2022. What I saw and felt in this game I will never be able to forget. The same similar feeling I experienced when passing friend Bo, Edge of Fur, and Sekiro Shadows die twice. This feeling of madness on the verge of genius. Anti-games which do not seek to entertain you insanely, they convey to you the stream of consciousness of their brilliant authors, creators who instead of mindless entertainment convey to you the story and their thoughts are not taken from the ceiling, but most likely having a real background in background. Not heresy sucked out of your finger, as is now customary but stories that will be imprinted on your cerebral cortex. After all, they prefer heavy reality to empty fiction, and most likely the experience of real people and real cases, slightly veiled under fiction. I am convinced that all these games have real roots, and are based on real events and experiences of specific people, and maybe even a personal meeting with the dark force. Perhaps these thoughts are slightly exaggerated hypertrophied, but still real and have a basis. It feels like the Lord God himself suggested this game to me. The fact is that for the last three years, I can find more than one catchy game that has filled a certain void and vacuum in my soul. I have been playing games since childhood and in recent years they have turned into garbage, which apart from devastation and irritation did not cause anything. One hot day in July 2022, I went to my favorite website with games and found among the novelties an abstract and slightly strange girl with a black inscription at the bottom this was this masterpiece. At first, looking at the screenshots which were certainly peculiar, but were similar to some kind of children's cripple pasta in the spirit of Five Nights with Freddy or Fur and Hanger, God forgive me. But everything turned out to be completely wrong so in my life I was not wrong. The game was released in a Steam and platform for enthusiasts and authors of low budget games, etc.io around the revolutionary masterpiece, in which I am sure the author has invested his whole soul, and watching the world clearly for more than one year did not gather any attention and excitement at all, a couple of dozen comments two of them in Russian, and only a few hundred players who bought and played this game. We are clearly going somewhere wrong. When the next grinders and slops come out, everyone runs to play them, and leave crazy money in these casinos, when a really revolutionary game in the semi-genre psychedelic and visual adventures of the old type came out. No one cares about it. Here you can tell that the author had no money for PR, and the cattle only need hype and herd opinion to find out and play some kind of game. After all, they don't play at random. Very sad friends, I hope my video will fix the situation a little. I seriously claim that this is the best game of 2022, one of the best games of its genre, and one of the best games I have played in my considerable life. Most of all, of course, I was struck by the plot and characters while today's norm is emptiness and characters are cliches, in whose template they do not put anything more than one stereotype. Billions of similar plots, written as if on a conveyor belt by the same incompetent and insane person about evil evil, and good good, in which there are no deviations and grey semitones. At a time of general emptiness and corruption, when no one dares to talk about complicated things, about the destructiveness of magic secret societies, and the price of immortality and great power, about how much harm they can cause to non-initiates, and people who simply do not know themselves, do not know where and how they live at what time and in what in what era, they become excellent bait for those who are eager to extract benefits from them from the dark forces, either to drag him away for sacrifice or to make him a soulless adept by stealing his soul, or by fooling him forcing him to do something masking it with good intentions. Remember who last time gave you a narrative, a ground for the mind, an interesting story that riveted your attention and did not answer all the questions at once, forcing you to spread out the grey matter, and come to your own, not imposed conclusions. After all, when everything is known about the game and even more it loses its value, you will not want to dig into it, learn and study it in the future. That's why I love the third far edge. Because after 25 walkthroughs, 
I still don't understand the ins and outs of all the events, and the actions of many characters that are not explained to any reason and logic. This is what attracts me personally to such games who do not lead you by the handle do not hold you for a complete idiot who will not master a little text, and not stereotypic cardboard boxes instead of real characters and types taken as if from real life and from real people who are not black or white, not only strong or weak but have their own oddities weaknesses and vulnerabilities, like we equal real people. It pisses me off to play another garbage dump about a strong smart invincible hero who saves the world from crowds of stupid illogical meat. It is much more interesting for me to listen to an abstract and veiled semi-philosophical story about the collision of a simple man with forces beyond his understanding, beyond the reasonable and explicable. Why put questions and riddles to a person? Why invent an interesting and rich story if you can numb him with endless cliches and cliches, discouraging any attempts to conscious thinking and moving your head? After all, this is what the world is based on now and we see the logical outcome of such a policy. This is by no means a criticism, as someone might think. This is just my private opinion it could be completely different for you. There is no single correct answer to all questions. This is a 10 tenths game that is recommended to absolutely everyone, and first of all to those who live in a vanilla cloud where everything is fine with the world. We live in bonds and stability there are really no problems. I think this game will shed light on many inexplicable things and events for such people from the first time, and about what is the state of the world since the 90s of the last century after all. There is no fine line between the game and reality and the creatures on sales.